What's going on, guys? Welcome back to WWE Network and show where I, Graham G.S. and Matthews, break down all the original content I watch on the WWE Network and on Peacock. And today we're talking the July 18, 2022 edition of Raw Talk. Uh, Matt Camp was not in the studio. He was on the show remotely, uh, hosted by Scott Stanford. No Jackie Redman this week. To start off the episode, they run down the biggest headlines from Monday's Raw, which honestly I thought was a fucking abysmal show. Um, you can read up my full write-up on the show on my website, WrestleRant.com, right now, so check that out when you get a chance but not a good show. Uh, one of the first things they do here on the episode beyond running down the biggest headlines from Raw is replaying the KO show with Riddle, which was honestly one of the few highlights from Monday's episode. Uh, backstage, Kevin Patrick interviews Seth Rollins coming off his win over Ezekiel and attacking uh, Riddle on the show. He calls himself the King of the Summer. Um, he, he can be called many nicknames, the Visionary, the Architect, whatever, but now you can call him the King of the Summer. And he promises to do what he did to Ezekiel on Raw. He promised to do. He promises to do that same exact thing to Riddle at SummerSlam next weekend. Calls Riddle a moron. And uh, Lawler, when they get back to the studio, and he was the special guest analyst for this episode, Lawler agrees. He says that he would. Uh, you know, he he picks Rollins to beat Riddle at SummerSlam. He's gonna squash his brains all over the map. But Riddle has no brains, so there's no gonna be no brains to uh, to splat all over the map because Riddle has no brains, according to Jerry Lawler saying that everything Rollins said was true, and Riddle can't be fired up, because again, Rollins is going to embarrass him in that match next weekend, he says. Uh, Matt Camp plays up Rollins' SummerSlam resume. There might be some truth to that King of the Summer nickname. Um, he's had a great SummerSlam resume, and one of my few Mr. SummerSlams in the last decade, I would probably the most, the superstar most synonymous, in my opinion, with SummerSlam in the last 10 years. From the matches with John Cena in 2015, the match with Balor in 2016, uh, 2015, or I already mentioned 2015 with John Cena, but 2014 with Dean Ambrose, 2017 winning the Raw Tag Team titles, 2018 um, beating Dolph Ziggler to win the Intercontinental Championship, 2019 beating Brock Lesnar to win the Universal Championship, 2020 the great match with Dominic, 2021 the great match with Edge, and I'm sure the match with Riddle will be no exception. Um, Matt Cam says that if Rollins can win that match, or rather if Riddle can win that match, it's going to be one of Riddle's biggest wins of his career to date. From there, they recap the Damian Priest versus Rey Mysterio match that was won by Damian Priest in the aftermath with the rest of what's left of the Judgment Day anyway, attacking Dominic and Rey Mysterio. They also promote next week's celebration of the 20-year anniversary of Rey Mysterio's Raw debut, or WWE debut, just in general, not Raw debut. He wasn't on Raw for a while after that, but the 20-year anniversary celebration of Rey Mysterio's debut coming up next week on Raw. Um, they also replay AJ Styles versus Theory for Monday's Raw, where Styles won by count out. Um, AJ Styles is interviewed backstage here on Raw Talk. He says that uh, there's going to be two things that put a target on your back here in WWE. One, being a champion, which Theory is not. And two, being a jackass, which Theory is, in Styles' opinion. He says that Austin Theory is a very punchable face, and he could be one of WWE's greatest superstars ever if he could get past that. Uh, Matt Cam says that Theory has a lot of enemies right now, and he does, and I mentioned this before, between, you know, we teased tension with John Cena when Cena was on the show three weeks ago. You had the Cena interaction, teasing, cashing in on Brock Lesnar and Roman Reigns. He's feuding with Dolph Ziggler, has issues with Mad Cat Moss, AJ Styles, um, you know, challenging Bobby Lashley for the United States Championship again at the SummerSlam pay-per-view. So he's got a lot of enemies right now. They also replay the Miz TV segment from Raw, where the Miz and Logan Paul went face to face, and the Miz accepted Logan Paul's challenge to a one on one match at SummerSlam. Also replaying the Bianca Belair successful Raw Women's Championship defense over Carmella from last night. Uh, we hear backstage from Becky Lynch, who was interviewed by uh, Sarah Schreiber, and Becky says that she is the rightful owner of that Raw Women's Championship. She can't remember anything about Bianca's Raw Women's title reign unless it has something to do with her. Um, which, I mean, could be somewhat true. I think Bianca's had a fine reign so far as champion, so that's not entirely true. But she does say the most memorable parts of Bianca's reign involve Becky, which is, that is true, that is true. Um, she says that, you know, herself, Becky, is synonymous w with the Raw Women's Championship, and she needs the title, and the title needs her. And before she can go on, she just says, oh, you know, I think... When I win that championship, I just need a nature a nature walk, like Rollins, uh, not Rollins, but Kevin Owens said on Raw. And then she calls for Kevin Owens, and he just so happens to be sitting in the same locker room where they're doing this interview. He was in one of the cubbies for some reason. So Becky and Kevin then go back and forth talking about his nature walk, where he was for three weeks, saying that he was in a, in a nature retreat, rather, 
in Colorado. And then he saw a lot of moose, and the only other time he had seen a moose before was with Sami Zayn and on a glacier or something like that. It was honestly the most interesting part of this entire episode of Raw Talk. Unfortunately, Sarah Schreiber very quickly cuts them off, throws it back to the studio, and we don't get the conclusion of the conversation between Becky Lynch and Kevin Owens. Kevin Owens has been the best part of this show anytime he's been on in the last month or two. I wish they would get Kevin Owens a permanent fixture spot on this show. They won't, but it would be cool if they did. Anyway, back in the studio, um, Jerry Lawler says that Bianca is a one-trick pony and that beyond her hair braid in the championship, she is nothing without that title, which uh, was one of the dumbest things I've ever heard, period, but specifically coming out of the mouth of Jerry Lawler. I mean, he says a lot of dumb things. That was pretty stupid. I know, you know, they have him kind of toe the heel line and, and praise all the bad guys and whatever, and that's fine. But a dumb opinion is a dumb opinion. That's not just shitting on Bianca. That's just not true. To call her a one-trick pony pony is one of the dumbest things I've ever heard. So, uh, that was a pretty stupid comment. He also calls Becky Lynch a national treasure. Uh, Meanwhile, Matt Camp says that Bianca's a confident champion. And this time, unlike last year when she lost to Becky Lynch in like 20-something-odd seconds at SummerSlam, uh, she actually has the time to prepare this time. And granted, she did at WrestleMania, she beat Becky there, too. That's not really being talked about. Um, But that is true. They're going back to the match at SummerSlam from a year ago, as they should, and that makes sense. Uh, to close out here, they talk about Logan Paul and The Miz. Lawler says that Logan Paul is always about the spotlight. And uh, The Miz is going to beat Logan Paul at SummerSlam. And from there, he has it on good authority that Miz, following that win, it might be one of Miz's last matches because he might join the Cleveland Guardians because he was just in the MLB Celebrity All-Star Game or whatever it was the other day. The other day, And uh, I think his team won. He actually did remarkably well. They showed the highlights on Raw this week, which was pretty funny. And then uh, to close out, Matt Cam says the spotlight will belong to Logan Paul at SummerSlam. He's going to win that match, and they plugged the bump for Wednesday, and that was it. So the best thing about this entire episode was the, you know, uh, inter- interruption from Kevin Owens of Becky Lynch's mini interview. I thought that was tremendous. AJ Styles did well. It was great to hear from him. They had a lot of stars on this episode, a lot more than usual. We heard from Rollins, AJ Styles, Becky Lynch, and Kevin Owens. That's a star-studded cast right there. I thought that was fantastic. So, um, very good stuff, decent raw talk, Scott Stanford, I enjoy as the host, Matt Camp did well as well, uh, remotely, and um, yeah, that was Raw Talk in a nutshell for July 18th, 2022. Thank you guys for checking out my review of the show, I appreciate it, be sure to like the video, drop a comment, share the video, and uh, subscribe to the channel for more daily content. Have a great rest of your week guys, I'm Graham G.S. Matthews, and I'll catch your ass down the road.